Buenos días y bienvenidos a la misa aquí en Ocomis Heights, este domingo de diciembre 11 del año 2022. Estoy aquí con el pastor Steve y estamos felices de celebrar esta misa con ustedes. Si esta es su primera vez visitándonos, una bienvenida especial y esperamos seguir viéndolos aquí con nosotros. Welcome to worship here at Nicomas Heights uh, on Sunday, December 11th. I'm Pastor Steve Delzer, and with me is intern Pastor Yesenia, and um, our preacher today is Mark Olson. And we continue with our theme of light dawns on a weary world. And now we enter into worship with the hymn. As we light the Advent candle, we pray that God's light will dawn on this world, that those who are weary will find rest and warmth, and that all creation will be bathed in the brilliant light of Jesus. Al encender la vela de Adviento, oramos para que la luz de Dios amanezca en este mundo, para los que están cansados encuentren descanso y calor, y para que toda la creación sea bañada en la brillante luz. De Jesús. 
If Zion was a city in Minnesota, this wild, weary land will awaken and be glad, shining like the lake waters, rippling like the rich, waving prairies, rising like the green, knowing woods. Peace is growing like the glory of a cedar, spreading hope as a cottonwood, with its never-ending seeds that cling to window screens, peeking into our kitchen, whispering, don't be scared, God is near, indeed. Then our words will rest and our ears will hear. The world will be turned over, so the last will be first and most free, free as Gitchy Gumi's dark blue depths. And all the roads nearby shall be holy ways, leading all of God's beloveds, everything ever, to sing with joy and light, and loneliness will be no more. We pray together the prayer of the day. God of the wilderness, remind us continually that you are Emmanuel. You are a God who stays with us in the woods, in the parking lots, at work, at school, at home. You are everywhere, making all ground holy ground for us, your weary people. For you we will wait. Amen. Dios del desierto, recordamos continuamente que tú eres Emmanuel. Eres el Dios que permanece con nosotros en el bosque, en los estacionamientos, en el trabajo, en la escuela, en casa. Estás en todas partes, haciéndonos el terreno una tierra santa para nosotros tu pueblo cansado. Por ti te esperaremos. Amén. The first reading comes from Isaiah, the 35th chapter, the first through the 10th verses. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it shall bloom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it, the majesty of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are of a fearful heart, be strong, do not fear, here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For waters shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool and the thirsty ground springs of water. The haunt of jackals shall become a swamp. The grass shall become reeds and rushes. A highway shall be there and it shall be called the holy way. The unclean shall not travel on it, but it shall be for God's people. No traveler, not even fools shall go astray. No lion shall be there, nor any ravenous beast, beast come upon it. They shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there, and the ransomed of the Lord shall return, and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Gospel reading comes from Luke, the first chapter, the 46th through the 55th verses. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely, from now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servants, Israel, in remembrance of his mercy according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham, and to his descendants forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A Magnificat. Our bodies burst for waiting to magnify you, O God. So we cross our fingers, take a deep breath, and break out in four-part refrains, rejoicing in you, Surely, from now on, all generations will feel as blessed as we do, for you hear our noise, all of it, in its four-part mess, and still you ask us to give you more. Holy is your name. You who make the blue of herons and the sweet sand of pears, you who speak in fire and dress in nothingness of silence, all the nations breathe in you, the creatures all look to you. Still, you tilt your ear to hear us. Holy is your name. I got a note from a friend of mine this week who's having a hard time. I won't use his real name today. I'll call him Derek. Derek sent me an email message to a, and to a small group of friends too. He was reaching out to share a kind of update. His life isn't going as he'd hoped. He and I and most of the other people in the email thread went to seminary together, or at least we overlapped. Derek was a pastor for a while out west and then left the job. It wasn't a great fit for a number of reasons, and it didn't end well. Since then, he and his family have moved around a couple of times, and he's found work in various non-ministry jobs. He's been waiting and working for some vocational stability and success, and it doesn't seem to be coming, even as good things are happening around him. He's tired and he's sad. His health has suffered. He's angry. He feels lost. I've been thinking about Derek all week, worrying about what he'll do, how he'll recover, especially as the weather gets harder and colder this winter and darker. Derek can't see his future very well. He can't even see the present very well. He's gifted in a great many ways, but I sense that he can't quite believe it right now. He's a good dad and a faithful partner. He's funny, he's smart, he's loved and appreciated by many, and people are telling him that, but I don't know if he can hear it or what message he hears along with the words. I imagine you know someone like Derek. It's possible that you're like him yourself. I've felt that way in my own life at times. I expect I might again in the future. Sometimes we lose the plot of our lives. We wake up one day and we miss the sunrise or can't quite shake the shadows. Some days or some seasons we wonder what's the point. I'm grateful that Derek reached out. I'm glad to be able to support him from afar and even more glad that he's getting some professional help up close too. Derek's depression, the hard cold place he finds himself this week stands in contrast to the traditional title for the third Sunday in Advent. In the Roman and Episcopal churches and among Christians who like to speak in Latin, today is known as Gaudate Sunday. Gaudate means rejoice. It's actually a conjugated verb in the imperative. It's like a command. Think, rejoice, y'all. I'm not sure that brief an invitation is enough to pull rejoicing out of me. It's probably not enough to lift the veil that has settled over Derek or pierce the fog that seems to shroud the wider world these days either. 
I've been told that telling someone who's suffering from depression or having a bad day or even just not feeling 100%, telling these people to just cheer up is pretty ineffective advice and even counterproductive. Derek needs more than Gaudate this week. This hurting world requires more than a short command to turn the frown upside down. There's an Advent prayer that I remember from my younger days. The church I belonged to offered a long prayer in the communion liturgy, and it changed from season to season. These prayers had a section that included a kind of summary of history that was pointed at that season. The one for Advent went something like this. God of every nation and people, from the very beginning of creation, you have made manifest your love. When our need for a Savior was great, you sent your Son Jesus to proclaim and embody your kingdom of joy and peace, justice and mercy. My favorite line in that, the line that captured my imagination was that bit about our need, when our need for a savior was great. For my friend Derek, I think that's this week. When has it been like that for you? If we need the help of a savior, I suspect we're going to require more than the directive to cheer up. We're going to need more than Gaudate this Sunday. The brilliant science fiction writer Ursula Gwynn, she's a feminist pioneer and essayist. She wrote plays and poems. She wrote an essay about the craft and philosophy of storytelling some years ago. And it changed the way I think about almost any kind of writing. It changed the way I read books or poetry or fiction and nonfiction, even the Bible. She starts her essay with a theory about ancient human beings. Bear with me. Many people, she writes, believe that the first and the most important tool early humans used was a pointed stick. Hunter-gatherers started as hunters, goes the theory, and when you're hunting mammoth or bears or antelopes, you need a sharp stick to kill them with, and then another to roast them over the fire on. You need a point in order to survive. Well, Le Guin argues instead that the first tool was a basket. Based on the nutritional needs of human beings and the amount of energy it requires to chase down those mammoths and bears and antelopes, relying on hunting for the majority of the calories required to survival was a losing proposition. Our ancient ancestors didn't need to be mighty hunters. Instead, they needed to be patient and creative gatherers. And to do this well, to do it in a way that allowed them to feed not only themselves, but also the people they loved and cared for, they needed something in which to carry the good stuff home. They needed a basket. Ursula Le Guin is a writer of stories. Like Sarah Clark, who wrote our poems today, like Mary of Nazareth, she's a singer of songs. She takes her insight about ancient human tools and sustenance and community and comfort, and she applies it to her own craft of storytelling. Stories and songs and poems don't first need to have a point, she writes. We are not building spears for fighting or sticks, for smacking or rulers to measure by our stories. If they're going to stand the test of time, they will survive or they'll perish not because of their ability to hit the bullseye, but because of their power to bear. Stories and poems and songs are like baskets. Their gift and their genius is located in their ability to include us, to feed us, to offer a place for us to be held and carried. Whether they're gospels or prayers or lines of poetry, stories are not first intended to pierce or break, but to gather up, to carry home, and then to pour out for sharing the good stuff, the stuff that fills the belly and the soul alike. And this, I believe, is what we need on this chilly, bright day in December. This bright morning at the end of a hard year that came after a hard year that came after a hard year. Listen again to what Mary is making. The Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is God's name. 
God's mercy is for those who fear God. From generation to generation, God has shown, shown strength with his arm. God has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. God has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. God has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. God has helped God's servant Israel in remembrance of God's mercy according to the promise God made to our ancestors, to Abraham, to Sarah, to their descendants forever. In her song, Mary's weaving a new pattern into the tapestry of history. She's bending the strands into a new shape. She's building a basket, a container that will be big enough to bear the story of the Lord who is coming near, the story that's coming in this Gospel of Luke that's just beginning, the story that holds and carries the life and death and resurrection of Jesus. Jesus, the tiny tadpole that is even now changing the chemistry and construction of her body as she sings and dreams and dances with Elizabeth, her cousin. Mary is weaving with her words a basket that is big enough and strong enough to last for centuries, large enough and fine enough that nothing and nobody can slip through or fall out. Not even you, my friends, and not even me. It's the same with the poetry that graces our worship today, from the wonderful Sarah Clark, as well as from Isaiah, from the writers of our hymns and our prayers. Their words are more than words. They're inviting all of us into those vessels of song and story, into a future of possibility and promise that reflect the pattern of God's mercy and God's power. God has raised up the lowly and brought down the mighty. God has filled the hungry with good things and sent the full away with empty hands. God has done great things. God has helped us. God is helping us. God will help us. Of course, we can't always see this future as clearly as we'd like. Sometimes we're unable to hear the songs and the promises. Sometimes we get stuck. Sometimes our ability to imagine the reality of the world Mary describes or the gifts Jesus offers or the grace our pastors and preachers speak into our ears is clouded by confusion or sadness or noise or worry or regret. Sometimes we're like my friend who feels so lost in the heaviness of the present moment, so defeated, so frozen, so painfully pointless. When our need for a savior was great, O oh Lord, you sent your pregnant prophets. You send your light-filled poets. You give us Mary, the magnificent mother of God, and all these unexpected angels and singing sisters are weaving together the basket that can shelter and bear us when we have nothing left to offer. If you can't see or hear the great God of the universe's presence in your life today, don't panic. If you're not quite able today or this week or this year to reflect the radiance of the sweet baby Jesus, don't worry. It's still Advent. Stay close to Mary. She knows things. She sees where this is going, and she's generous with her strength. Some of our Egyptian Christian brothers and sisters call her the breaker of chains. Let Mary be your preacher. Let the liberating power of her song sustain you. You may discover yourself humming along or even adding your own voice. Go with it. Rest in the bearing basket of hope and the power that holds us all close. And rejoice, y'all, because the Lord is near. Amen.
for the church, the world, and all of God's creation, especially remembering these family and friends of Nokomis Heights. Jerry Casterton, Rebecca Domkowski, Christopher Ferguson, Rich Groner, Jennifer Harris, Dennis Holstad, Dee Levine, Bonnie Lon, Susie Murray, Blanca's sister Nellie, and Katie Slingsby. Oramos por la iglesia, el mundo y toda la creación de Dios, especialmente por los que hemos nombrado el día de hoy y los que llevamos dentro de nuestro corazón y nuestras mentes. We offer our prayers in song. Ofrecemos estas oraciones en cantos. Gathered together in the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, gracious God, we offer these and all our prayers to you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Reunidos en la dulce comunión del Espíritu Santo, Dios misericordioso, te ofrecemos estas y todas nuestras oraciones por Jesucristo nuestro Salvador. Amen. We pray together the Lord's Prayer. Oramos juntos la oración de nuestro Señor Jesucristo. Our Father nuestro, in heaven, que estás en el cielo, santificado sea tu nombre. Come, Venga a nosotros tu reino, hágase tu voluntad en, en la tierra como en el cielo. Danos hoy bread. nuestro pan de cada día. Perdona nuestras ofensas como perdonamos a los que nos ofenden. No nos dejes caer en tentación y líbranos de todo mal. Porque tuyo es el reino, el poder y la gloria, ahora y siempre. Amén. La paz de Cristo esté con ustedes and also with you. La paz de Cristo esté siempre con ustedes. Y también contigo. Good morning, everyone. Today, I want to tell you a true story with a happy ending. A story that changed the life of many people, including mine. I want to thank Pastor Cree for the opportunity to share my story with all of you. I want to tell you my own story, our story, the story of a program that didn't die thanks to an angel that arrived at the right moment. Generosity is more than giving money to solve another problem, giving clothes or food to others in need. Generosity is sharing time, effort, or access with others without expecting anything in return. I want to tell you the story of someone who changed the life of BLC and its children as well. That person is Stephanie Korkek, a member of Nokomi High Lutheran Church, who you know very well, a woman to whom I personally respect 
love, and admire very much. And she might not know how much she changed my life. Before the pandemic, BLC had around 180 children and 40 bilingual and bicultural employees. I remember well that March 17, 2020, Minneapolis Public School informed me that the schools were going to close without knowing when we will return. It was very painful to tell the BLC staff that no one knew when we would return. BLC lost all but three people who are still with us, and I thank them for the support and loyalty to me and the program. They are Adriana, Linda, and Liana, and you know well. They are my family, the BLC family. I didn't know what the future was for BLC. Would it survive? What will happen to me? My God, what was I going to do? Many feelings and uncertainty filling my heart with pain, frustration, and even lost faith. It reminds me a lot when I came here to Minnesota in 2003 to study at Hamlet University. When I arrived in Minnesota, I had the same feelings, and I asked myself, could I survive? How well my family will be? Will I learn another language, another culture, another life? There were many changes coming to my life. During the pandemic, BLC needed a home to start over. So I started looking for places everywhere, Catholic, Lutheran churches, and community centers where the answer was the same. There is no space for your program. In a different Lutheran church, close to Nokomi Height, they say yes, but they require to pay amount of money that we didn't have. One night in October 2020, Alicia Juarez, a member of the board, told me that a window mom has posted on the network that Nokomi High has a space that we could use for distant learning. I contacted Stephanie and BLC was able to reopen on January 16, 2021. I couldn't believe it. It was a miracle, the type of miracle that we only see in the movies. Thanks to Nokomi High, we have a permanent home, a place where BLC and its children and no, Nokomi Height, Lieutenant Shore are one. Things definitely happen because there is a God that made them to happen. Change our good and challenge must be taken as they come. God has created us so intelligent that we can survive any sorrow, pain, change, and become strong. As my mother used to say, at the end of the tunnel, there is always a light. Believe me, my dear friends, I had lost faith, as many people do when they don't see a way to find the light at the end of the tunnel. Today, I have the honor of being part of Nokomi Height as children minister and at the same time running the BLC program. Stephanie and Nokomi High Lutheran Church members told us, mi casa es su casa, and I'm proud to be a part of the family, the Nokomi High Lutheran Church family. Buenos días a todos. Hoy quiero contarles una historia real que tiene un final feliz. Una historia que cambió la vida de muchas personas, incluida la mía. Quiero agradecer a Pastor Chris por la oportunidad de compartir mi historia con todos ustedes. Quiero contarles mi propia historia, nuestra historia, la historia de un programa que no murió gracias a un ángel que llegó en el momento preciso. Cuando hablamos de generosidad, hablamos de personas que dan dinero para resolver el problema de otros en un momento determinado o que dan ropa o comida a otros que lo necesitan. Generosidad es más que eso. Es compartir tiempo, esfuerzos o bienes con los demás. 
sin esperar nada a cambio. Ese ángel busca a los que más necesitan para extenderle una mano. Yo los he llamado un cazador de personas necesitadas. Retrocedo un poco para contarles la historia de alguien que cambió la vida de Bielsi y sus niños. Esa persona es Stephanie Korkik, un miembro de la iglesia Nokomi Height, a quienes ustedes conocen muy bien, una mujer a quien en lo personal respeto, amo y admiro mucho y tal vez ella no sepa cuándo o cuánto cambió mi vida. Antes de la pandemia, Bielsi tenía más de 180 niños de la escuela de Windom, de cuando era una escuela de doble inmersión y teníamos más de 40 empleados bilingües y biculturales. Todavía recuerdo muy bien el 17 de marzo del 2020, fue el día en que Minneapolis Public School me informó que las escuelas iban a cerrar sin saber cuándo regresaríamos. Fue muy doloroso avisarles a todo el personal que no sabíamos cuándo volveríamos y que podía empezar, podían empezar en otro lugar. Fueron días muy difíciles para mí y para la organización. Perdí a todos los empleados, menos a tres personas que aún continúan con nosotros y quería aprovechar la oportunidad de agradecerles su apoyo y la lealtad, como es Adriana, Linda y Eliana. Y ustedes las conocen. Ellas son mi familia, ellas son la familia de Nokomi Height. No sabía cuál sería el futuro de Biel si sobreviviría. ¿Qué me iba a pasar? Dios mío, no podía ser, no sé qué iba, qué iba a ser. Tristes sentimientos e incertidumbres llenaron mi corazón de dolor, frustración y hasta perdí la fe. Me recordó mucho cuando vine aquí a Minnesota en el 2003 y tuve muchos sentimientos y me preguntaba muchas veces, ¿realmente vale la pena venir a un lugar desconocido? ¿Mi, mi familia se sentirá bien? ¿Aprenderán el idioma, la cultura? Eran muchos cambios para mi vida. Durante la pandemia vi el si necesitaba un lugar para empezar de nuevo, Así que empecé a buscar lugares por todas partes, iglesias católicas, luteranas, centros comunitarios, donde la respuesta era la misma, no hay espacio para su programa. En otras iglesias luteranas, cerca de esta, por cierto, me dijeron que sí había, pero teníamos que pagar grandes cantidades de dinero que no teníamos. Una noche en octubre de 2020, Alisa Juárez, miembro de la Junta Directiva de BLC, me contactó y me dijo que es una mamá de Windom, había publicado en las redes que en la iglesia donde ella estaba había un espacio que podíamos usar para el aprendizaje a distancia. De hecho, ella escribió que su iglesia tenía ese lugar. Me comuniqué con ella inmediatamente y pudimos reabrir en el 16 de enero del 2021. No podía creerlo. Fue como un milagro, el tipo de milagro que solo vemos en las películas. Gracias a No Come Height tenemos un, un hogar permanente. Un lugar donde BLC y no Comi High son uno. Las cosas definitivamente suceden porque hay un Dios que hace que sucedan. Los cambios son buenos y los desafíos deben tomarse como vienen. Dios nos ha creado tan inteligente que podemos sobrevivir a cualquier tristeza, dolor, cambios y volvernos fuertes. Como decía mi mamá, al final del túnel siempre hay una luz. Créanme, mis queridos amigos, había perdido la fe como le sucede a muchas personas que no pueden ver la luz al final del túnel. Hoy tengo el honor de ser parte de Nokomi Height, como ministra de niños y al mismo tiempo dirigir el programa de BLC. Stephanie y los miembros de Nokomi High Lutheran Church nos dijeron, mi casa es su casa y estoy orgullosa de ser parte de esta familia, la familia de Nokomi High Lutheran Church.
We pray together the offering prayer. Gracious God, use the gifts we bring to share your light in this weary world and bring hope to lives that are broken. Amen. Oramos juntos la oración de la ofrenda. Dios misericordioso, usa los dones que traemos para hacer brillar tu luz en este mundo cansado y llevar esperanzas a las vidas que están rotas. Amén. Just one announcement, a reminder that our Christmas Eve worship services are at 3 o'clock and 4.30. El día de hoy solamente tenemos un anuncio. Las misas que vamos a tener para Nochebuena serán a las 3 de la tarde y a las 4 y media. And now receive the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Y ahora reciban la bendición. El Señor te bendiga y te guarde. El Señor haga resplandecer su rostro sobre ti y te tenga de ti misericordia. El Señor vuelva hacia ti su rostro y te conceda su paz. Amén. serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Y ahora vayan en paz, amar y a servir al Señor. Demos gracias a Dios. <laughs>